Hello, SS fam. How are you all doing? It's still New Year, guys. Happy New Year! So, guys, today I'm gonna be doing my labor and delivery story, and before then, I'm gonna be introducing to you guys the latest and the newest member of the SS fam. Are you guys ready to see him? I know you guys are ready to see him. So guys, before you meet the newest member of the SS fam, I want to use this opportunity to say a big thank you to all my fellow content creators. You guys was amazing. As soon as I dropped my delivery video, oh my word. I'm not gonna call names because if I suddenly start calling names, I am definitely gonna omit some people. So because of that, I will be calling names to all my fellow content creators that share out our delivering video I say may God bless you all bless your household bless everything that you lay your hand to do in this year 2020 and I also want to say a big thank you to my two pregnant women we were all pregnant together now I have put to bed I'm not pregnant anymore big shout out to Zander's family and fantastic favor I wish you guys safe delivery Thanks for sharing out my delivery video I want to say thank you thank you thank you thank you I wish the both of you safe delivery and for the rest of you that also share the video we are grateful now meet the newest member of the SS fam yeah come skin yeah come skin yeah come skin yeah comes the king yeah comes the king yeah comes the king. Hooray! Okay, I'm gonna be crazy, mom. <laughs> so, guys, here is the newest member of the SS family. Yay! Guys, he's sleeping. So, you guys have met him. You already know his name. His names are Kian Ogene of Ye Scott. So, you can abbreviate the middle name to Ovie. It's Ogene Ovie. So, you can abbreviate it to Ovie. So, meet Kian. And most of you spell it as K K I O N. No, that's not the correct Kian. spelling. The, 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 the correct spelling is K I A N. Kian. So, this is Kian in the building. So, guys, thank you so much for always watching our video. So as you all know, we already did the vlogging during our labor and delivery. So I'm only going to be discussing the, the parts that I did not hammer on during the labor and delivery. So if you have not watched the labor and delivery, you feel free to go watch that so you can catch up with this story. So guys, the part that I want to first of all talk about is the when you're watching movie, you see people like, huh, oh, my water just broke, and you see the water gushing and like everywhere what my water just broke so because after giving birth to all my children I have not I don't have that experience of oh my water broke so when I was losing fluid I did not actually know so when you are losing fluid when it is time uh, close to your when it is close to your delivery and you are losing fluid you should know that that is water when you just finish wee wee and you want to go again it's not it's not looking like wee wee the water is just coming out on its own but it's a gradual process it's not really like it's gushing out or it just came out once that is actually you uh that's actually your water breaking so you can go to the hospital because when i got to the hospital they actually confirmed to me that my water broke mine was not like in the movie or what i was expecting it was just like a gradual process i was losing flu gradually gradually that i now know now and i also want you people to know so the second part i'm going to be talking about is the pain part <laughs> you all already know that I did not use the epidural so when I was in that pain that labor pain was really intense I'm not gonna lie about it because most of you want to know how painful is it is painful I'm not gonna lie but what you should know is that body differs people are different because I remember my uncle's wife when she was giving birth there was never a time that she was in any crucial pain like that she just go in and come out as if she's not even in labor so yours might be like hers so there's nothing to worry about so when i was in that severe pain the lady suggested she should give me some anacotti i forgot what she called the name if you watch the video you probably heard that say it's just like form of like talanol yeah all those other way of managing pain 
it wasn't working guys she was just giving me all those injections through the IV but it was not killing the pain it was like a waste of time it was not working yes and you also saw me in that video I was <laughs> I was high on the gas guys you see the way I was pumping the gas that <sighs> when I'm in pain I'm trying to kill the pain guys it's not a pain killer it was not reducing the pain what that gas was doing to me was actually diverting it is a mix of diversional therapy yes once you are popping that gas what you're going to be feeling is if you have never been drunk before maybe high on alcohol that is just the feeling that's the way that's the way it is that's the way i can describe it because the, that was my first time of using it so when i was pumping that gas i was like sucking it like this like <sighs> sniffing it so i can kill the pain all of a sudden i feel so weird like my eyes, <laughs> my eyes was like turning me. I'm like, sweet, I'm high. My husband was like, you are high. That's a good feeling. My husband joke about everything, guys. Even when I was in pain. So, what I can say about that gas is a diversional therapy. It does not kill the pain. But when you're having that feeling of highness, kind of deviate your attention for that from that crucial pain, that pain, excruciating pain you're feeling. It deviates your attention or it diverts your attention to that feeling of highness. That is what it was doing for me. Guys, as you all know, I have four kids now. Yes, if you are seeing this face for the first time, this woman here is mother of four. So I have actually seen it all. I have actually used epidural before. There's no more story to tell. So the major thing I'm going to be telling you guys is the different way. Like if you are contemplating, like if you want to go if you are into labor or you are about to sign like what pain meds should i take or what method should I? nobody can advise you though but i have used epidural before epidural is the real thing like if you don't want to feel any pain you don't want to feel you want to feel zero percent you can even be discussing with somebody till they will tell you they're actually going to start monitoring your contraction through the uh, computer so they're going to tell you through the monitor that oh it's time to push that is how epidural can numb your pain. It will numb your pain to zero percent. You will feel nothing, nothing. Once they give you that epidural and the epidural started uh, and the, uh, the epidural started working, you will feel no pain at all. You'll be in labor. You'll be discussing later. I remember when I took the epidural, they, they were the one that uh, told me that oh, you are dilating very well. You won't feel that. You, you will not feel contraction anymore. You will not feel you are dilating. But this time around, I choose not to take the epidural because that epidural space, after they use the needle to poke down my epidural space, after the, you know it's a long needle. So each time, when I, when I got home, when it will look, each time I remove cloth from there, I will feel like there's a breeze passing through that hole. It might be weird. Not everybody might feel it. And another reason why I did not take it is after I took that epidural, when I got home, Maybe like a month after, I started feeling waist pain. I was feeling pain in that epidural area where the, the pain in that uh, their epidural area where they gave me epidural. I was feeling pain there. Yes, it's not a pain that you cannot manage. It's a it's a pain that you can take painkiller. Maybe after a long time, a year later, then you will not feel the pain no more. So that is this. So if you are thinking of, I've told you about the. I don't know why I'm not remembering the anacotic they gave me. It's just like a uh, normal Tylenol. So that it does not that does not work with pain. I've told you about the gas. I've told you about the epidural. Epidural killed the whole pain. Even after putting to bed, you can't feel your legs. You can't feel your legs. It's to take a while before you start feeling your legs. That is how much that's how much uh, numbness epidural can do to your leg. You will not feel from here. It will numb you from here downward. Yes, you won't feel any pain. You won't feel any pain. That's what epidural can do to you during labor. So you just deliver your baby all the way, no pain. After delivering, even if you have a tear, no pain. So another major thing that happened to me in this, and another major thing that happened to me in the labor room was I have tear. So I could not tell you guys that. Yes, they did not give me epicetomy. When I say epicetomy, is the process where they have to do the tear by themselves. They didn't tear me by themselves. When I was pushing the baby, I had a tear, guys. You know? <laughs> there is no pain like that tear. It's so painful, guys. 
is so 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 painful so and when i was pushing the baby <laughs> so you know you have to hold your leg hold the two legs spread the leg apart and hold the two legs backward so when i was pushing the baby like that they were like push during the you push each time you feel contraction it's not just like the way they'll be shouting in nigeria like push 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 no when you feel contraction you push then if there's no contraction you wait but once the contraction comes because the baby is helping you to push them so that is when you push not when you start pushing you just have to push and push all the way no when the baby start control when you are feeling contraction the baby is actually also ready to come out the baby is pushing you and you are pushing too that is when you should be pushing so when i was pushing like that all of a sudden i could not feel my both legs my legs were shaking because they were hanging in the air i was holding them in the air i could not help hold them anymore i could not support myself and i was like who is there anybody supports me so they had to bring two nurses came to my side and they held the leg up for me then i have to push so when i was pushing during that process of pushing i have a tear they did not give me they didn't tear it themselves i have a tear so that tear was so painful guys mm. there is no pain like that it was so painful so after i delivered the baby and i delivered the placenta so they have to suture that place like they have to stitch it so they stitch it up for me so when you get home you have to sit on hot water and all that not too hot maybe lukewarm water press the place it's painful guys take your drug sometimes because of that tear that you have you have sudden cold it will take a while because you just push you just deliver a baby it's not easy they will all take a while but it will eventually go so yes even when i was working in the hospital you guys cannot tell that i have a, a tear i am very good at managing pain that is how I've, that's that's how i've been since i was a child i am i have never been that kind of person that will be having pain and i will lie down when my husband ever see me lying down he will know that he will know that the thing is out of the world yes so that is it guys so if they if they give you epicetomy when you are maybe it's your first time they give you that tear they suture it so that's how you should manage it if they use dissolvable suture that means you don't have to sit in a very hot water you don't sit in a in water that is very hot because if you sit in a uh, in uh, any water that is very hot it's going to lose if, if they use dissolvable you're going to be sitting in the lukewarm water and they're going to give you something that looks like if it's the bottle it has mouth so you fill it up with water then you spray just in case you use the washroom and you cannot wipe you cannot clean but you have that bottle that looks like a fill bottle just press the water in there then you are clean then you wear your pad so what, which uh, what is another major thing that i went through because i'm just telling you guys the major major things that you guys did not have to see there yes which other thing so that was how my labor went guys so but i thank god now we are home we are here with the baby we are here and healthy if you guys have any question concerning the epidural gas or every other thing that goes on in uh in the labor room go ahead and ask me uh in canada some people show video of their labor room so once you are done where are, you see first when i came to the hospital i was in uh in the monitor room from that monitor room i went to my labor room from that labor room when i was done with the delivery they had to transfer me to my private room yes that private room i paid for it some people said giving birth in canada is free but if you are going to use a private room or a semi-private room it's not free you have to pay for it but if you don't want to pay they're going to put you in the room of uh, four people when you when you go there they'll tell you option that there are rooms of four people room of uh, what do you call it semi-private and private semi-private is you people will be two in one room then private you have private room to yourself so that's my room that you saw so if you use private you have to pay if you use semi-private you have to pay last time that i used a uh, private room when i gave birth to michaela we paid 600 dollars so i don't think it, it has changed now when you use a semi-private room you pay 300 so if you use a private room you pay 600 but if you choose to stay in the room of four people so you pay nothing which i guess all those money have been taken from your tax anyway so that is it and if there's any other thing you want to know about my labor delivery room admission any other thing that i did not mention in this video feel free to let me know i love you all ss fam 
keep watching, keep sharing because when you share, more people will get to know the SS fam. Thank you so much everyone. We appreciate you all as always. If you have watched this extent and you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Subscription is actually free. And also, don't forget to turn on the notification. What that does is to notify you each time we upload a video. So you'll be a VIP. Pom pom! SS1 has uploaded the video. Then you rush down and watch. Thank you so much for all your support. I don't take any of my subscribers, any of our watchers, we don't take any of you for granted. Thank you so much, guys. Peace. We out.